Greetings and welcome to sdbiblestudy.org and SD Bible Study Church. Uh, I am pastor and teacher Alan Lewis Silva, and we will be reading from the section of the Bible, the King James Version, which is the Apostles, and we'll be reading of from chapter 1 of the General Epistle of James. Chapter 1 James, a servant of God, and of the Lord Jesus Christ, to the twelve tribes which are scattered abroad, greeting. My brethren, count it all joy when ye fall into diverse temptations, knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. But let patience have her perfect work, that ye may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God that giveth to all men liberally, and upbraideth not, and it shall be given him. But let him ask in faith nothing wavering, for he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea, driven with the wind and tossed. For let not that man think that he shall receive anything of the Lord. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. Let the brother of low degree rejoice in that he is exalted, but the rich in that he is made low, because as the flower of the grass he shall pass away. But for the, for the sun is no sooner risen with a burning heat, but it withereth the grass, and the flower thereof falleth, and the grace of the fashion of it perisheth. So also shall the rich man fade away in his ways. Blessed is the man that endureth temptation, for when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life, which the Lord hath promised to them that love him. Let no man say when he is tempted, I am tempted of God, for God cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempteth he any man. But every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed. Then when lust hath conceived, it bringeth forth sin, and sin, when it is finished, bringeth forth death. Do not err, my beloved brethren. Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above, and cometh down from the Father of lights, with whom is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. Of his own will begat he us with the word of truth, that we should be a kind of first fruits of his creatures. Wherefore, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, slow to wrath. For the wrath of man worketh not the righteousness of God. Wherefore, lay apart all filthiness and superfluity of naughtiness, and receive with meekness the engrafted word which is able to save your souls. But be ye doers of the word, and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. For if any be a hearer of the word, and not a doer, he is like a man, like unto a man, beholding his natural face in a glass. For he beholdeth himself, and goeth his way, and straightway forgetteth what manner of man he was. But whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty, and continueth therein, he being not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, this man shall be blessed in his deed. If any man among you seem to be religious, and bridleth not his tongue, but deceiveth his own heart, this man's religion is vain. Pure religion and undefiled before God, and the Father is this, to visit the fatherless and the widows, to, vith to visit the fatherless and widows in their affliction, and to keep himself unspotted from the world. All right, now, um, let's just go over a few of these key points. Um, 
James is writing to the twelve tribes. He is writing to all of Israel. The twelve tribes represents all of Israel. Now, that includes Gentiles, because we are grafted into Israel. Uh, you'd have to ask God yourself, you know, where you fit into that tribe you would be grafted into. Um, and God might reveal some things to you. And he might tell you about some things about your genealogy and the, the history of the peoples of the earth that you might not be aware of. You might not realize that there's a little bit of these twelve tribes blended throughout the entire earth. Africa, Europe, Asia, the Americas, Australia. Um, and God can also just graft you into some particular tribe. doesn't matter which one. Okay, Speaking to everyone. He says, now what happens is you're going to fall into temptations most likely. But when you do, count it for joy. Because when you're being tempted by the thing that you're thinking of sinning about, it's there to perfect patience in you through faith. It's trying your faith. We're all dirty sinners um, at some point, in some way, right? He mentions here later, you know, don't be like the person who looks at themselves in the mirror and sees all these things about them that are wrong and then goes off and then says, oh yeah, that that's not me anymore, now I'm different. No, we, we still have that quality in us because the flesh is weak, but we do have this task that's set before us to visit the fatherless, those without instruction, to teach them instruction, to teach the people the right ways, and to visit those who are afflicted people who don't have the protection of a husband or a father so to to give teaching to those who need teaching and to give support for those who need support and to keep our own selves unspotted from the world to as best as we can try to lead a good life where we're doing righteous things. Now, how would you know if you're doing righteous things or not if you're not reading the Bible, if you're not understanding what the Torah says and what the whole Bible says as a whole? It is possible for God to just speak those things directly into your heart, but the heart of a person is wicked. And God also provided His Word and His Bible for a reason, so that we would have it as a resource. So think about that. Um, so lay apart all this filthiness and all this excess of evil and receive with meekness, with a humility, God saving your soul. Receive that into your life. Receive what God's instructions are what he's teaching us to do, because anything that's good and perfect is coming from God, coming from Yahweh. There's nothing wrong with those things. Good things come from Yahweh. So be able to identify what those things are. Don't be just a hearer of the word. Don't be someone who's just hearing it and then doing something different, or being good for one day just to be good. Have a relationship with God. Love God. Every day, ask God. Seek God. Seek the Father. Pray and Bible study. Prayer and Bible study. There are going to be some mountains. There are going to be some valleys. You are in the perfect law of liberty if you can proclaim that Jesus Christ is Lord. And Jesus Christ has come in the flesh. But you need to with all meekness, seek the Father of lights. Blessed is the man that endureth temptation. That means if you can get by it, if you can pass through this temptation, God is going to bless you. 
God's blessings can come in all, all kinds of ways. They could come in the, in the form of a person or a friend in your life. They could come in the, in the form of God having more of a, uh, a role in your life, having more of a, um, a presence, a healing presence, a, a good feeling. You're starting to feel you know, good about yourself. You're feeling kind of like, feeling just good, just overall just feeling good. That's a blessing of God. Okay, you're hearing God's voice. He's, God's speaking to you spiritually about things that you should be doing. You're starting to prosper as you, you feel good about going that direction. And you, you're getting, you know, um, blessed that way. Um, God can also bless you in material ways. Um... He does do that sometimes, but we're doing these things because we love God. We're, we're in this church because we love God, right? And don't be too concerned with the things that are in this world. Don't be double-minded. Don't be coveting the things of this world and expecting God to do everything in this world that he's planning to reward you in heaven, Okay, so just know what sin is, too. Sin, when it is finished, is death. Uh, lust and sin, it's described in a very sexual way. Is drawn away of his lust, enticed, conceived, bringeth forth, finished. It's a very kind of rudimentary basis of the nature of this world um, and it's something that we encounter every day because we're alive but we have to learn how to be uh, victors and conquerors know how to fight know how to build up bulwarks know how to uh, attack an enemy city know who is ready to fight and know what to do once you've conquered all right, and that is our lesson. I think I'll probably publish these uh, throughout the week so that there's something new and it doesn't overwhelm people all at once. Um, this is for the um, all those who want to learn and have a relationship with Yahweh and His Son, Jesus Christ. And now let me pray for uh, the community of believers. Lord Jesus Christ, uh, we thank you, Lord. We ask you to bless us. Please uh, give us discernment. Please have mercy on us for the sins that we have committed. Please forgive us. God, we turn away from uh, anything that is unrighteous in our lives. And we seek, God, that things would proceed according to the way and according to the truth and holiness and righteousness, that you would have grace to steer us through and overcome, bypass and uh, conquer everything that is adverse to you. And we praise you, Lord Jesus Christ. We give you all the glory. We give you the praise. Um, we love you. And we thank you for all that you're doing. And we ask that you would uh, please help all those who are in need. Please help all those who uh, need support. Please help all those who need good teaching. And to all the devils and all the evil spirits in the world, we now bind, chain, muscle, and cage you from now until the end of the world in Jesus Christ's name. We rebuke you, devils. And we command you to uh, loose your hold off of all the resources and all the souls and all the lives of everyone who can be saved. In Jesus Christ's name, amen.